taking away limits. And in a tw almost 20 year arc since 2002, you can see what this has done for his artistry and his self-expression of who he is as a person, which is the goal of what we want in my teaching of LTR. It's your best self through drumming. So we want your best qualities and self-expression, everything that you have to say to come out on the drums. And to do that, we need to take away limits. Chris Lesso here, LTR, Life Through Rhythm, bridging the gap between drumming and finding your best self through playing the drums and the joy and the magic that is drumming, and that's why we love it. And I want to share with you something that I found in the, in, the, in the vault, and I've always wanted to transfer this because this came from a cassette interview that I did with Mike Mangini back in 2002. I can't believe it, 2002. And so you're going to have to deal with the tape hiss, which, which is, if you grew up with cassettes, it's kind of comforting and kind of cool. But so I transferred this over and I've always been obsessed and fascinated with the bridge between the magic that is drumming and uncovering our human potential through drumming. I think it's such an amazing vehicle to do this. It's fun. It's challenging. And it works on who we are as people, which comes out through the drums. So that gap is LTR, life through rhythm. And I've always been obsessed with this connection. And when I, I started teaching in the late 90s, and I started to want to connect with the absolute best in the world and share with all my students and, and anybody in the world what I was learning through these great masters, because I think when we, when we share and we serve, it, it definitely become, comes from feeding an, an inner passion. I don't think you can fake that. So I've, I've loved drumming since I was like, you know, two or three years old, banging on stuff, and also uncovering the best of who we are through this magic that is drumming. So in my studio at the time, I started to interview, just seek out these, these great masters and share the interviews with my community, which I still do to this day. To have this hindsight of finding this interview that's 20 years old, or almost 20 years old, and seeing the arc of how he lives his life, his practicing habit, his systems, his attitude, his intensity, his getting the most out of every minute. He's really got a no bull kind of attitude to how he lives life and how he studies and how he learns. So going back and listening to this, it's really cool to have the hindsight of almost two decades and see the power of what consistency does over that time. So I really encourage people, don't, don't think, you know, it's, it's good to think of today, the present moment, and, and maybe a year from now or, or quarterly goals and all that stuff is fantastic. But think in 10 year arcs. It's un, like you will surpass anything you can possibly imagine in 10 year increments with the power of consistency and systems and energy and of course rest and recovery and so many things that Mike has really demonstrated in his life. Now you're gonna hear me, so he was, Mike was gonna do this drum event during the day and as he was setting up, I got there super early, of course. And I remember he had, the, he had this big coffee. He was really cool. He's setting up. And, and at the beginning of this interview, you can kind of hear him talking to his tech and, and the attention to detail. I remember watching Mike set up. And if you study any of the masters, and I encourage you to live this in your life, attention to detail. Details matter. They stack up 
and they create something beautiful. So Mike was setting up and he's, and he's, you know, the attention to detail and just getting, making sure everything's right. He cared so much about delivering to all the people that were coming out. And he's there himself, you know, working on this. And I, and I asked him like, uh, uh, Hey Mike, can I, can I interview you for my studio? And I think, uh, maybe I've come a long way in my own confidence because, uh, uh, you could be the judge of that, but I'm listening to this tape and it's like 2002 and I'm like, okay, uh, so, so Mike, uh, and I was just like totally nervous and, and a little starstruck. Mike, Mike is, is always been one of my, my heroes in the drum world and, and as a awesome person as well. And he was just like cool, humble, you know, we always talk about a sense of humor. So he's laughing, he's having fun, but also like no bull, you know, let's maximize every minute here. Let's not, let's not waste time. And you can really feel that in the interview. So you're going to hear me like, um, and I've got my piece of paper and looking, uh, so Mike, uh, and I'm going through my question list and Mike was awesome. And he just kind of put up with my, my, you know, super boy fan, uh, uh, questions and, and just wanting to share his knowledge with everybody. So we can definitely see that arc with hindsight now that we know who Mike has turned into and things he talks about systems, having systems. Mike has always said, I'm nothing great. I'm nothing, you know, I'm not, I'm no prodigy. I'm no, I'm no, uh, you know, just I wasn't born with this magic, but I've worked on it through systems. So it's not magic. Talent is a myth. Have your systems together and you're practicing together. You know, I'm just a, a person that didn't rely on talent, but I relied on methods and systems. What they should see is hope that, that you know, this is, I, I'm a guy that evolved over time based on something uh, that took a lot of work and my passion and a hell of a lot of effort. And the LTR gap, we talk about like time management. So we always say study things outside of your discipline. So if you want to be a great drummer, study things outside of drumming, golf, uh, time management, psychology, comedians, just anything that will, you know, sports athletes, anything that will get you outside of just sitting at a pad and just practicing paradiddles all day, which is great. And we need that too, but we need to go outside and choose our disciplines. That's what LTR is all about. So Mike talks about studying time management and, and books and, and, you know, great figures like Peter Drucker and, and just, books and, and the masters of that area. He talks about studying the human brain and the human body. And that's always fascinating with me about Mike. And also the, 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 the quest to make the limbs equal, to think of the feet and the hands as equal. Now, will they ever be 100% equal? Probably not, but this is the quest of open-handed. And he really talks about taking away limits. And in a tw almost 20 year arc since 2002, you can see what this has done for his artistry and his self-expression of who he is as a person, which is the goal of what we want in my teaching of LTR. It's your best self through drumming. So we want your best qualities and self-expression, everything that you have to say to come out on the drums. And to do that, we need to take away limits. So Mike has always been playing open-handed and thinking of the feet as just as equal to the hands. So we talk about that a little bit, just taking away limits. And 2002 was about the time that I went into open-handed. So I can also with the tw almost two decade of investment into this, I can see how it's removed limits for myself as well in my self-expression. Have I mastered it? No, but I'm working on it. And that's the goal is we want to be on the path. We don't necessarily want to, you know, think about perfection because probably none of us will ever get there, but we want to be on the path of removing limits and really fearlessly with courage expressing who we authentically are as drummers and people. And the last thing he talks about is the art of learning. And again, with this hindsight, you can see where this has taken him and it's got him into, 
you know, the, the, the high level of what Dream Theater is doing and what Mike is doing with his writing and just soloing and, and, and composing with Dream Theater. Really want to be a lifelong student, have that white belt mentality in everything that you do. And just know the art of learning. You know, humility is such a great part of that. We need to be eternal students and never think that we've arrived. So enjoy this awesome interview with Mike Mangini. I had I had so much fun just putting my feet up and listening back to this interview. I hope you like the tape hiss. This might take you back to uh, a time machine, to different technology. And uh, enjoy this interview with Mike Mangini. Be inspired. Start hitting the drums. Practice every day. And enjoy the journey. I read an interview about uh, your, your, you were talking about time management skills and how mm-hmm. you had uh, a job and then you had to do this and that and then find time to practice. I was really curious about what, um, if you read any books or if you had any techniques because I'm really interested in that too because I got a lot more on too. Yeah, I studied structural thinking. It's the key to understanding things that you don't understand. Academic things, if you're not good at science or good at language or good at physics or good at it music or anything, mm-hmm. if you structurally organize things and you get a visual on it, it helps you understand what the ultimate goal is so that when you're stepping through the steps, you don't lose faith in what you're doing. So time management is about stepping through the steps of each, not necessarily each day, but more each week. And what time management did from studying management, like literally management, like to be a business manager. Yeah, yeah. From that course I learned to structure, you know, my activities. But what I did that was a little different is I structured it more bi-weekly or monthly so that if I didn't do what I was supposed to, I'd have time to make up for it. And it, it changed everything. And I would usually make appointments to worry about things. Like, if I was really stressed about something, I'd say, you know what, at five o'clock today I'm gonna stress out, but I'm not gonna stress out now. And it works. Believe it or not. Mm. Unless, of course, some girl rips your heart out and then there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, sure. I, I'm always trying to, to organize my time better. Did you read any books or anything? I studied. Yeah. In college. Oh, so. you took your course for it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. What were some of your main influences and inspirations that shaped your uh, oh. goal? Did you study with anybody? Or? Yeah. I started, uh, actually, at first, uh, before the age of five, and the age of five is when I started performing drum solos live, I didn't study with anybody. And then at five, in that year, I took a couple of lessons from one of my cousins, and that was it. And then I studied from ages 10 to 18 with one teacher, classical, you know, Drums jazz, or? everything. Oh yeah, percussion. All percussion, played in the school bands, you know, competed all the way up to first chair in the U.S. Mm-hmm. I made it, so it was good. Cool. And um, uh, but influences drummer wise, there are seven, and I stole from them. I didn't. They didn't influence me really. I, I literally stole their stuff. Yeah. Because uh, I'm influenced by many people, different instruments, different <coughs> different people. Period. But um, Ringo Starr, Danny Serafin, Bobby Columbi, Buddy Rich, Neil Peart, John Bonham, and Terry Bozio. Those seven. I learned everything that they that they ever did. <laughs> you know, I tried to. So, did you like uh, with the Zappa stuff? Did you transcribe that? Yeah. Really? I was able to hear it and understand it and play most of it, but there were some figures I just couldn't get at all, and that's what prompted me to study uh, the rhythm the way I did to be able to understand that stuff. That's why I wrote the books I wrote because if you learn it in a very systematic way, when you have definitions. This is what a, a something note is. This is what that's called. That's what this is. That's what that means. And you have a set of rules. It's easy to look at a piece of sheet music and go to the rules and reference it. Rather than to get a sheet music put in front of you and have someone tell you, well, just keep reading, you'll get better. No, you won't. In fact, you'll hate it. Yeah, so. yeah that makes sense. Uh, what do you think has de- helped you develop your expression the most? The fact that... Um, I try to make all my limbs unlimited, which of course is impossible, but that's right. Mm-hmm. It is impossible. So good. I won't stop practicing for life. That's a good goal, yeah. 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 So the thing is, I, I want to be able to mimic a machine. That's why I have the righty and lefty thing going. You, when you program something into a machine, the machine doesn't say, oh, I can't do that. Yeah. So I want my body to do that. And that's what, you know, yeah. that's what helps physically, but mentally, 
uh, to academically, excuse me, the study of rhythms and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and how they, how the rhythms are used and applied to different styles of music is what the other half of it is. Mm -hmm. So that's how I take the limits away yeah. by studying every possible rhythm and then making my body able to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, not every rhythm, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was uh, Billy Cobham and Simon Phillips, uh, did they kind of expand your limits a little bit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the way they set up, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you said in the interview Simon Phillips or something. Yeah, that effect, he affected me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I told him that, too. Right on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. Um, how did you practice when you were younger? I slowed down. When did you, when did you uh, feel like you were hitting stride and because I'm always trying to, to like I keep the practice journal and I'm always trying to revise it and this works this doesn't work. when did you feel like you hit something like you, I, I might have been six I mean young I was really young but I knew to slow down the records and I was relentless absolutely unbelievably relentless at making sure I knew what the notes were and I'd sit in the kit and do my best and I would not stop till I got it, until I thought I got it. Obviously, a lot of the stuff I learned at that age, I couldn't really play, but I, you know, came close. Buddy Rich and stuff, that's cool. Oh, yeah. So you were... Uh, no, not at age 10, which no. is when I was, rip, I was ripping them apart when I was 10. But, you know, I, you can't, 10-year-old yeah. can't get that stuff. So but I understood. Yeah. I mean, I understood shapes, and I understood the, the speed. Yeah. Doing it was a different thing. Yeah, that's, well, that's the first step is understanding. Yeah. Um, did you... Did you have any practice systems when you were younger that helped you? When did you start to develop your practice systems? That you had I just knew to see shapes. Yeah, that's it. And I would repeat on a, on, a sim on the simple theory that if I could move from every instrument on my drum kit to every other instrument with the same amount of notes, every combination possible, then I could at least control the immediate surrounding in my drum kit area, meaning if I could go from my further symbol like that to the other symbol yeah. at a certain speed, well then I could very certainly play from my, you know, one of my tom-toms to my snare easily at that speed, mm -hmm. and that was my principle. And I did it hours, six, seven hours ago. Is that what you mean by shapes? Yeah. Like, okay. Triangles, squares, lines, rhombuses, shapes yeah, I don't even know the names of. Yeah. So you have one hand going one shape and one hand going... Every possible thing. Yeah. Seven. I didn't care what it sounded like. I just yeah. Made the shape work. Yeah. Cool. Did you did you come up with any up against any walls or ruts? Any any barriers? Or yeah. Like everybody does. Yeah, but my feet wouldn't work. For about ten years, I tried to get them fast, and they just wouldn't work. Every once in a while, they I'd be able to fly, but then that was the end of me. I couldn't make them work until I studied the the leg system and the human body and the human brain. Then I figured it out very fast. Yeah. How old are you when you do that? Um, uh, close to 30. Dom told, Dom Famigliaro, I yeah. studied with him, he told me to take uh, tap dancing, so I took seven months tap dancing to give it a good, but... Hey, Mike, are we going to go back to the back of the hotel? You can go. I'm going to stay here. I'll meet you at the hotel. Get off and ask I'm just going to stay here. Yeah. I'm fine. Go ahead. How many did you study it in college? The uh, No. I studied management and computer science in college. It wasn't until later that I started studying cognitive science um, and physics and religions and history and you everything you could ever imagine. No, no, no. I did all of it on my own. Yeah. That makes more sense. Um, what well, 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 look, the thing is, once I learned how to learn, um, I learned as much as I could, and I still do. There's a way the brain works, and that's the end of it. You gonna go into that tonight? Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. Simple. What are, what are some things you practice now? Um, well, I, speed-wise, especially since setting the world record with my hands, I have to maintain speed. Because you don't get faster excuse me, you don't maintain, ever. When I say maintain, that means I'm getting, I'm working against the grain, I'm working against the decay that's naturally going to happen to everything, you know, you decay. So I have to keep fighting it. So actually I'm progressing forward, but not, you have yeah, to fight, yeah. in, even if to, just to maintain it, yeah, because your body decays. So yeah. I practice speed and rhythms to keep myself busy, 
Um, mostly. Yeah. You know, singles and doubles with my hands and feet. Just use your imagination. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, what's your What's your approach when you're improvising and performing? I don't believe in it. I don't believe improvisation actually really exists. As I know, independence absolutely doesn't exist. There's no such thing as it. And that word is yeah, horrendous. I agree. There's no such thing. There's absolutely no such like thing. There's dependence. There's coordination. You need to coordinate all the limbs, not yeah. separate them. So with um, um, improv, I think about the categories of, of moves that I have in, in my bag of tricks, so to speak. I think of styles of music, rhythms, you know, sounds in the kit, and I just kind of make equations to put those things together, which, if you want to define that as improv, then that's okay with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whatever you call it. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, it's like saying you're creating, I don't know, a, a, a Zildjian symbol or something. Those elements already exist. You mean, there's a compound. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so you I can do. get away with saying it exists, but, okay. you know, there's I, something below it. Yeah. Okay. I asked Alex that question, Alex Kuna. And he's, he's Alex who? Alex Kuna. Oh, okay. And uh, there was just like a, a, about a week and a half ago. He's like, I always think of Melody. I always think of Melody. Mm-hmm. So. Well, yeah, but that's one of the categories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's what's the most unusual thing that's given you inspiration in music in your life? Studying unusual the human music. brain. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, do you have a message for young players? What would you say to young yeah. players? learn to use your head think think properly and I mean if you're trying to get better at an instrument you have to understand by or you have to understand via perspective every possible thing meaning you have your body and you have your mind there are certain rhythms that have names to them and styles and there's certain mechanical things that are the way they are for your body basically by developing your personality you're combining those two and you shouldn't have anybody tell you what to do. Um, but you got to use your head. You know what I mean? And, and uh, things that things that are truthful show themselves very quickly. So you got to learn to think. And if they're trying to get, you know, a career out of it, you have to understand the career mechanics, the components of being a successful drummer. They're different than being a drummer. Mm -hmm. And mostly there are social skills involved. Yeah. You don't just arrive somewhere, hi, I'm here, hire me. No one wants anything to do with it. You have to take a lot of time to make friends, develop trust, and then maybe someone will work with you. If not, too bad. <laughs> you got to learn how to be nice to people. Yeah. So. Eh? Yeah, said. Um, <clears throat> what, mo what artists or bands are you listening to these days? I, I don't even want to, I just, <laughs> everything. I can't even. I know, I, I, people ask me that. Yeah. I uh, sometimes I'll think of a CD that I just discovered or something like that, but I know I just never did. Um, what are your future goal goals and dreams? I just to keep going, and stay alive. Awesome. That's it. Okay, good. <laughs> Applies to everyone, all of yeah. us. Yeah. So. Cool. Is that it? Yeah. There you it. go. Thank you very much. You're welcome.